Hi, Kayla. Hi, Bruce. Okay, so this is just a quick review of a meter comparison video that we did. It's about 35 minutes long, so we're going to summarize our quick summary points. of it, yes. Yeah, really. Save you from having to watch 35 minutes. But if you want to watch why we gave them the review, these reviews, you can click below. I'll post the link there. Okay, so let's start with the Gigahertz Solutions meters. HF59B. We'll yep. So the, for accuracy and pulse width, we gave it. Green. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's their flagship meter. It's very accurate. Great uh, narrow pulse width detection. Okay. Um, for the frequency range, we gave it a yellow. It goes down quite a bit. It goes down to 27 megahertz, yep. but it only goes up to 3. Yeah, 3.3 a top something with the UBB antenna. So right. if it would do the 5.6 gig band as well within one meter, that would be great. Other, mm -hmm. Then it would get a green. Yeah. But you have to buy another meter. Um, it's not easy to use at all. No, you have to be a tech person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of which is When fine. you put in these adapters, you have to flip the switches in the right position and stuff. You have to understand uh, milli micro, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you just have to understand yeah. some numbers. And it is quite expensive. Yep. It is a very expensive meter. Yeah. Um, it's a good meter. It is. So for people that want, to, that are that are in the industry, it's, it's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the 35 HF 35C, mm -hmm. uh, it's the same accuracy and pulse width for mm -hmm. uh, that rating. We gave it both green, but the again frequency range. Right, same issue um, <clears throat> with with the extra antenna that you have to pay extra for. You're still yeah. limited down below 3.3. Uh, gigs pulse width is not as good uh, like yeah. uh, but that's that's okay it still gets narrow enough for for most purposes yeah, yeah. and <laughs> again not very easy to use it could it's easier than the 59b mm -hmm. but not as easy as some of the others so that could actually be a yellow not a red but right somewhere in between if you yeah. can imagine a range in between easy and yeah it's easy, so easy it's easier than the 59b for yeah. sure yep um and it's less expensive yep quite a bit but again there's all these extra add-ons so if you want it to to do everything, it yeah. does get expensive. Right, with the Omni antenna. Mm -hmm. Nine volt battery, short life. Yeah. So, eh. uh, the tri field meter, um, we're only reviewing the RF side, the mag field, the uh, Gauss meter, it works really well. But yep. for RF, uh, <clears throat> it is not great for accuracy and it doesn't have any pulse width response really well it's the pulse with the, anything nine, any pulse microsecond. narrower than nine, nine millise milliseconds, yeah, milliseconds which is uh, you know th yeah it's, it's <laughs> crazy slow pulse with her so not for not great for digital communications or certainly smart no. meters nope uh the frequency range is fine it's not that great it's, it's inconsistent it's yeah. hit or miss and um, it doesn't yeah. go its full frequency range as well that no full advertised frequency range no um it's very easy to use yep it's pretty Dial. yeah Cry. i like it it's very pretty yeah <laughs> And it's it's very inexpensive. So for all of the other measurement devices, it's, it's great. It's just not for RF. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Cornet, as you can see, it goes pretty much the same across the board for everything. It doesn't do anything well. That's the summary of it. <laughs> yeah. I would just say it uh, doesn't do any, everything well, anything very well. I didn't find it particularly easy to use. It's no, it's it could actually be a little bit more confusing. red. Right. For ease of use. Yeah. It could be confusing and it's easy to... Uh, uh, to be in the wrong menu, get the wrong units, and things like that. There's a lot going on in that display. Too much information. Yeah. TMI. But it's pretty cheap, so we think that maybe that's why it's quite popular. It's a very inexpensive. I don't know why it's so popular. I wish it wasn't, but it is. Mm, can't yeah. control the market. Um, so the EMF 390, we decided to test a meter outside of North America, and we were kind of sorely disappointed. Uh, we wouldn't recommend this meter at all for RF. At all, no. but it's really inexpensive. <laughs> it is. If it was, if, if this, uh, if we were reviewing a nightlight, you know, we, um, yeah, it would be great. But it was a fun uh, toy. But yeah, it's not an RF. Yeah, meter. please don't take that meter seriously. So, uh, yeah, it's just well, moving on. Oh, the Acousticom too. Yeah. Small. Um, it's not great for its accuracy. It doesn't actually pick up 5.6. Right. It's missing the 5.6 gig band. It's it's supposed to be in the range, but there's a there's a big response uh, thing there. Yeah. That's that's why we're, you know, um, uh, yeah, it, it's claiming a, a range and it's not not receiving uh, that, that well in that band. It's a very easy to use and it's oh. very inexpensive, but 
Yep. Just missing that, and it's full. It doesn't actually display for its full frequency range as well, and its pulse width response isn't right. So as good as it could be. Right, it's not right. bad, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not as good as not as good as it could be. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, same with the M10. Same yeah, it's the same face. same uh, detector, same front end. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the display is not backlit, so if you're trying to read it in the dark, yeah, yeah, you have a look. But the same thing for everything else. It's very easy to use. It's a little bit more expensive than the uh, Acousticom 2. Mm -hmm. It's big and clunky. Uh, yeah. But I don't personally... I demonstrated it in the video you can fit it in a pocket. Yes. It doesn't look very discreet, mind you, but you can fit it in a pocket. A very particular pocket. A, a big pocket. <laughs> big pockets. <laughs> 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 Moving on to the SS Classic, the Safe and Sound Classic. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it's green all the way across the board because it has a very large frequency range. It's very accurate over the frequency range and it can detect uh, five microsecond pulse widths. So it's good for smart meters. Yeah. Um, very easy to use, easy interface, and it's inexpensive. Yeah, I've measured pulse width detection on that thing down to three microseconds. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, it's it's my go-to meter for, for, for traveling. Tra very portable, yeah. very portable. Yeah. Um, and moving on to the last and not least, the Safe and Sound Pro 2. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a the same... Yeah, yeah same RF detector, yep. front end. Um, just combine that with, a, with an OLED meter that you can read easily at nighttime. Uh, outside. It comes with a fun Mac, max reset button. The max reset features. button now on the Pro 2, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, and both the Safe and Sound Classic and the Pro 2 meters are lab calibrated, tested, and the test results uh, it, are published. If you ask that from any other ma meter manufacturer, you might be surprised at, uh, at what you, uh, well, at you the get. silence that you get yeah. in the reply. Uh, the only reason it's yellow is because it's a little bit more expensive than... Right in the price range. But yeah. for dollar value for what you're getting, it's very, very good. Yep. Yeah. It replaced the HF59B for me. It mm -hmm. replaced that meter and the and, and the HFW59, uh, what's the 10 gigahertz uh, meter from gigahertz Oh solutions. yeah, yeah, yeah. two meters in Two meters, in are just, one. yeah, I just carry the Safe and Sound Pro now. Far more convenient. Yeah. And, and it's uh, our version of the AM10. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. why they're in the same price range. Yeah. Anyways, Thanks for clicking. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the link for the previous video will be posted below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye. See ya.